Alright, I've renamed the ship to the Lafayette, and as you can see, it's been tagged. So, thank you, Roblox. Let's go ahead and let's close that. And uh, apparently now the ship is named... So yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Recreating the Disasters, and today we're focusing on the Normandy. So yeah guys, let's get into the video. Alright, so here we have the Normandy, and Jay Kellen, do you want to give us a bit of background as to what the Normandy was? Yeah, so the SS Normandy was a French ocean liner built in Saint-Nazaire, France, for the French line. She entered service in 1935 as the largest and fastest passenger ship afloat, crossing the Atlantic in just a little over four days. The SS Normandy remains as the most powerful steam turbo electric propelled passenger ship ever built to this day. Oh my gosh, that is a tongue twister, holy cow. The designers intended their new superliner to be similar to earlier French line ships. They were approached by Vladimir Yorkovich, who was a former ship architect for the Imperial Russian Navy that had immigrated to France after the 1917 revolution. Yorkovich's ideas includes a slanting clipper-like bow and a bulbous forefoot beneath the waterline, in combination with a slim hydrodynamic hull. His concepts worked wonderfully in scale models, which confirmed the design's performance advantages. The French engineers were impressed and asked Yorkovich to join their project. He also approached Cunard with his ideas, but was rejected because the bow was deemed too radical. Construction on the SS Normandy began on January 26, 1931. On October 29, 1932, she was launched in front of 200,000 spectators. The 27,567-ton hull that slid into the River Loire was the largest launched. The wave produced was washed up on the shoreline and over several hundred spectators with no injuries reported. The ship was dedicated by Madame Marguerite Lebois, wife of Albert Lebois, the president of France. She was outfitted until early 1935, finally receiving her interiors, funnels, engines, and other fittings to make her into a working vessel. Finally, in May of 1935, Normandy was ready for trials, which were watched by reporters. The superiority of Yorkovich's hull was visible. Hardly a wave was created off the bulbous bow. The ship reached a top speed of a little over 32 knots and performed an emergency stop from that speed in 5,600 feet. Normandy's novel design in lavish interiors led many to consider her as one of the greatest of ocean liners, and she would go on to heavily influence the French arm of the streamlined modern design movement, called the style pack boat or ocean liner style. Despite this, the SS Normandy wasn't a commercial success and relied partly on government subsidies to operate. During service as the flagship of the French line, she made 139 westbound transatlantic crossings from her home port of La Havre to New York City. Normandy held the blue ribbon for the fastest transatlantic crossing at multiple points during her service career. Normandy held the blue ribbon for the fastest transatlantic crossing at multiple points during her service career, during which the RMS Queen Mary was her main rival. All right, thank you, J. Killen. Now we're gonna set sail and we're gonna make our way towards New York. So let's go. Now, J. Killen, I don't know about you, but the Normandy for me is one of the greatest ocean liners to ever be built. I mean, if you look at the streamlined design, the interiors, everything, it really is such an amazing ocean liner. Yeah, I mean, it is like a really sleek design. The only thing that just does look a little weird is just the stubby looking funnels because I'm more into the taller and more cylindrical looking funnels, similar to those that are found on the earlier ocean liners, you know, like the Olympic class and those earlier steamships. Yeah, that's a fair thing to say. I definitely can see it. For me, I'm just more into that streamlined design and I really, really love the hull shape as well on this ship because it just looks like it was designed for speed. Now the Normandy's interiors were just on an entirely different level as well. If you look at some of those photos, they don't even look like they're inside of an ocean liner. They look like they're inside of a grand building, maybe somewhere you'd find in New York or something like that. So that is also something that surprised me when I first found out about the Normandy. For a second, I thought that this was you already at New York because they already have a Normandy just kind of listing over to port here at the the dock oh that's actually really strange well then double normandy all right so we've got this storm popping up and it looks like the normandy is handling really well i mean it is rocking around a little bit but not as much as the queen mary which is always good one interesting thing i've noticed about the normandy and i could be wrong about this but to me the normandy looks significantly wider than other ocean liners what do you think about that, Jay Killen? 
I mean, that does give more room for space, but if you want to have like a really fast ocean liner, it's best to have like a more sleek kind of hull design. But I mean, I guess like even with the Normandy, that wasn't really much of a problem regardless. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. And what's really unfortunate about the Normandy is, as you mentioned, it was not a commercial success. And I believe it was like 48% or so full throughout its entire career, which is really sad. So it never got to be over 50% full. All right, the sun has just come up, and unfortunately, this pesky thunderstorm is still around, but it should be gone soon. I mean, it's been here for quite a while, so usually that means that it's going to be gone in a little bit. But now we've got some land ahead of us, and that means that we're approaching New York, because usually New York is surrounded by other smaller islands, at least in the game. All right, I'm going to mention this again, but the Normandy is just a super sleek looking ocean liner and you can really get some great views of the ship. Imagine if you were in some little rowboat and the ship just passes you by. This would be such an amazing sight to see. Really unfortunate it ended the way that it did with that fire and we'll be getting into that in just a minute. Now, Jay Killam, where are you right now? I know you're in the Queen Mary. Are you at New York? Yeah, so I'm actually just uh, a bit past the Statue of Liberty. Like, if you were going from Cherbourg to New York and you just kind of find the Statue of Liberty, I'm on the far side of the island. Okay, sounds good. I guess I'll meet you up there. All right, so in just a minute, I think I should be able to see the buildings of New York. And I could be wrong, but that does look like there's something out there. That is such a nice view, seeing the Statue of Liberty in New York as we enter the port. And I should be able to see you soon. I'm turning the corner now. Yeah, I just see you poking out from beyond the buildings over there. Oh, there you are. Wait, no. That's me. I see Normandy. Yeah, I'm just a bit past it. Oh, yeah, there you are. Now docking the ship. This is going to be a little bit difficult. All right, I'm lined up and I do see you moving. So where are you going? I'm actually moving to the port next to it because I think it's a bit more accurate in terms of the size of the actual port that both the Queen Mary and Normandy were in. Oh, do you want me to move over there then? Yeah, just kind of move to my right where I'm kind of pulling in right now. All right, sounds good. And there we go. Now the Normandy and the Queen Mary are side by side. All right, J. Killen, now that the Normandy is here in New York, why don't you explain what's going to happen to it and also what's happening globally? Yeah, so what had been going on was World War II, which is a, a pretty significant event. Eventually, the SS Normandy was seized by U.S. authorities at New York and was renamed to the USS Lafayette in 1941. So yeah, that's where we are, and luckily in-game, if we press Z on the keyboard, we get the Lafayette or troop ship livery. So let me go ahead and change the name. All right, I've renamed the ship to the Lafayette, and as you can see, it's been tagged. So thank you, Roblox. Let's go ahead and let's close that. And uh, apparently now the ship is named. So yeah. Yeah, so the Queen Elizabeth was actually also here as well. And there's actually some photos that were taken and you can see all three ships kind of bundled together in the ports. Yeah, that is really cool. I've seen some of those photos and it is really amazing to see all of these massive ocean liners just sitting right next to each other. Yeah, so eventually the Queen Mary and the Queen Elizabeth, they would be pulled out. And I guess just to do some troop related things, you know, because they were troop ships at the time. And the Lafayette was actually in progress of being converted into a troop ship. All right, so the morning is approaching, and we should be seeing the sun come over the horizon in just a moment. All right, so there it is, and Jay Killam, why don't you go ahead and tell us what's about to happen to the Normandy, or, well, should I say the Lafayette? Yeah, so on February 9th, 1942, at 2.30 p.m., sparks from a welding torch being used by workman Clement Derrick ignited a stack of life vests filled with flammable material that had been stored in Lafayette's first-class lounge. All right, so we're about to see that happen here. You can see... The Normandy is now on fire, and it didn't really start out all being on fire at once. It actually slowly spread throughout the ship. Yeah, despite that the ship had a very efficient fire protection system, it was disconnected during the conversion, and its internal pumping system was deactivated. Regardless, the New York City Fire Department's hoses unfortunately didn't fit the ship's French inlets. Before the fire department's arrival, approximately 15 minutes after the fire broke out, all onboard crew were using manual means in a vain attempt to put out the fire. A strong northwesterly wind blowing over Lafayette's port quarter swept the blaze forward, eventually consuming the three upper decks of the ship within an hour of the start of the conflagration. And you may have noticed, the fire is now out, and the reason that that is is that there is no sink by simulation with this model, 
and unfortunately that means I have to sink it twice, so I have to put the ship back into the port and then sink it again, so yeah. Now, Jay Killen, what happened next? Yeah, so Captain Komen, along with Captain Simmers, would arrive at around 3.25 p.m. to see their ship in flames. As firefighters on shore and in fireboats poured water on the blaze, Lafayette developed a dangerous list to port due to water being pumped into the seaward side by fireboats. Eventually, the SS Normandy capsized onto her port side and came to rest half-submerged on the bottom of the Hudson River at Pier 88. And luckily, that's happening for us, and as you can see, the Normandy is now almost completely rolled over to the port side. And there are some amazing photos of this actually happening, and it's really incredible to see this massive ocean liner turning over on her port side and then just resting on the seabed like that. Now, of course, in-game, it's going to sink directly to the bottom, which means it's going to go fully under, but in reality, this is how it would remain for quite a while, right? Yeah, although she was salvaged at a great expense, restoration was deemed too costly and she was eventually scrapped in October of 1946. Well, the Normandy is now sinking completely to the bottom, as you can see, and that, once again, did not happen in reality. Alright, so that is it. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye.